exploring societal challenges through the lens of civic science. This is the Local Perspectives Program with host Ia Dwara Kanath. Hi, and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Dia Dorkanath. In this segment, we'll be sharing clips of past episodes where our expert guests give actionable advice on tackling a range of issues through the lens of civic science. That's at the heart of what this program is about, taking action to solve big societal issues by including local community members in engaging with and or directing scientific work on those issues. In each segment, we deep dive with our guest into four intersecting components, action, society, science, and community. We find and interview guests who are scholars or practitioners in their field and who work at this interesting intersection. And we talk to them about what action they've taken, the science behind it, which partners they've collaborated with, and what lessons they have learned. Each of these guests is a boundary spanner, a term I heard from Katherine Kramer on the Civic Side TV network. They work across fields, crossing boundaries between academia, policy, arts, and community involvement to address issues like climate change, voting technology, quantum outreach, public health, and more. We aim to provide you, our audience, with unique perspectives from these experts who are actually doing the work. Our action-oriented focus on societal issues helps fill a gap in civic science media coverage. The clips you'll now see range from quantum scientists and nonprofit advocacy groups to documentary filmmakers. Each of them provides important and sometimes surprising advice on how to make a dent in solving these large scale issues. It's exciting to be doing both the cutting edge research alongside the public interaction because then they start to feed each other. That's that's the goal at least, to see, have a feedback loop forming. Um, and so creating that and making it smooth and making it um, result in something new, uh, that's a big question we're trying to answer too. That's awesome. So on that note then, what are some of the uh, lessons you've learned from interacting with like the local library. I understand it was the Urbana Free Library. What um, learned from from working with them and from the public? What kind of fed into your feedback loop for for yeah. actual research? Yeah, and I'd say the lessons we've learned are, are very similar uh, to the lessons that um, Paul and Smith have learned through their amazing uh, lab escape uh, that Paul's created and the Arts and Science Collective that Smith has created. And that is that the public is ready. The public is excited and enthusiastic about learning about these ideas, about participating in different aspects of it. And um, that's what we found with the Public Quantum Network. You know, they were standing room only at the launch event. Um, people continue to um, send in measurement requests using the permanent installation at the library that we installed. Um, and so I think that's one big lesson is that people are ready they want to know more. And I think um, having the opportunity to learn and to contribute, um, that, that's what I think they're very excited what to have. What advice do you have for others doing similar work on food sovereignty based on what you and the founders now know? It, it's really all about building partnerships and building community. Uh, we could not have done any of this ourselves. We are only highlighting solutions and, and telling these stories because we have very strong partnerships with actual community gardens, urban farms, uh, indigenous uh, leadership organizations, and so forth. Um, so building community, building partnerships, and finding the right people in the system has been key to this full process. So if, if other people are doing some similar work on food sovereignty, then definitely don't do it alone and, and find people, find communities who are already doing this, learn from them, highlight them, partner with them and, and build community. What do you think, um, you know, from the work you've done and, and what others and, and your team have done as well at 3 PDX, like what actionable advice do you have for others doing similar work? If they were watching this and um, what what could they take away from what, uh, you know, some, some actionable advice they could take away, what would you tell them? Uh, I think keep it fun and creative. Um, one of the, the benefits to um, our physical office space and work is that it's a really fun place to be. There's a lot of gorgeous art. Um, there's like books, there's murals and posters and like banners from previous events. And uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, it, with all of the feelings around climate and make, 
and how hard it is to sometimes bring people into the movement. I think the like biggest thing people can do is make it a fun, exciting event. Um, like you're tackling something huge, it should be fun. It shouldn't be like, oh my gosh, like I have to go to a meeting and like talk about this policy. It should be like, oh, I'm so excited. Like we're gonna work really hard on this campaign to, um, yeah, to make sure that we stop this big polluter. And one of our campaigns right now is in a huge common period. And they do such a good job of making it fun. They're sassy, they're, they're, um, they've got some pizzazz to them. And I think that um, the more groups, especially since you might want to put on like a very professional front and be like a little more serious, um, that's my, my main advice. Make it fun. You'll have a, a wider range of volunteers and community members. And also like as a staff person too, it really helps with not feeling so burnt out and frazzled when you're actually having fun at work. Knowing what your organization now knows, what actionable advice do you have for others trying to build similar programs from what you've learned with your program model? You know, I think it's so easy to get, um, to focus on some of the exterior things of, of trying to launch something or trying to run a nonprofit like what's the logo and having a website and getting fabulous free status and all you know what I found is what was most important to our success was staying focused on uh, our students what they need what they're responding to um, what's resonating what's not and the closer we got to a program that they resonated with and yielded the outcomes that we were seeking, the sooner the rest of the other bigs came into play. Support for the Civic Sci TV network comes from viewers, readers, and listeners like you. Visit civicsci.tv.org to learn more.